Hey guys, welcome back to another video in Spring Boot series. In this video, I want to address one of the issues that can happen with uh, using Spring Security. And that issue is uh, Spring Security won't allow us to do a post request because now, now since it is in place, it will try to prevent all uh, sort of attacks. And let's see what, what is happening right now. So we have the same um, endpoint 8080 videos where we are serving all the videos so let's hit that with the username and with the password and it goes through fine 200 okay nothing comes back because we don't have anything yet and now run a post request this is a post request we are sending the same username and password and ideally if both the username and password is fine we should see 200 okay and with with you know this new video object gets inserted into the database so let's see what happens and you'll see we get a 403 forbidden here right so what's going on right i mean we do have uh, the videos endpoint implemented in a post but we are not able to call it right uh, the reason for that is when as soon as we put spring security in place spring security by default enables all the uh, you know all the prevention mechanism to secure your application and uh, one of uh, one of the uh, prevention in this particular use case is CSRF uh, which stands for cross site uh, request forgery i uh, will discuss that detail uh, in in you know in few minutes but uh, essentially spring security is enabling that prevention for us which is not allowing us to perform the post request right so CSRF stands for cross site request forgery uh, let's take a look at the diagram and let's uh, see how it works it's it's basically an attack on 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 the on the website or in, on your service right so uh, what happens in a regular scenario let's look at, look at this example that a user a user uh, visits uh, say his bank website so let's say the website is mybank.com right and the user enters his username and password and logs in right and on a successful login uh, bank uh, authenticates the user and um, successfully send back an authentication request right and so user can do you know and do his operation whatever he wants to do with, with the bank so there is a token right here right and the bad guy let's say is sitting here let's see so he, this guy is sitting here and he sends this user um, let, let's say this this guy has a website say uh, badwebsite.com right And at a later point this guy this user visits this website right now the, with that now this this bad guy can send uh, you can send back user uh, uh, you know a sort of HTML form or something for via this website right so this form can contain a request uh, you know the that go to your my bank dot com and you know transfer money amount is whatever let's say thousand dollars whatever the URL format is right you get the idea and then say on submit do a post request right uh, whenever the submit happens just uh, post it um, so this 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 works right so now this user uh, right here this is already authenticated to mybank.com so he is a uh, he has uh, his credential saved right and he has this token already so when when the bad guy sends sends this request back right this guy has already credential saved on his browser and with the token so this guy without you know of being aware of that fact the good guy actually goes back uh, take this request and call his bank again right say number five 
and obviously bank isn't aware of what happening with this bad website and what his user is doing so user bank thinks it's a it's a request coming from the user so bank initiate this transfer request and send that you know that whatever amount is there to the to the bad guy right so uh, this is a very basic example but the idea is uh, the reason it's called cross site because now uh, you know bank is um, acting on the behalf of uh, this bad guy you know on the, taking a request from the bad website instead of an authorized user so um, in our scenario what's happening is we have a get request and that get request generated a token now with spring security spring security is trying to prevent us doing a post request because spring security doesn't want this step to happen right and that's why uh, for now we have to disable csrf from spring security so we can move ahead right in a production scenario in a real world application we don't want to do that right we want to enable csrf and do a you know preventive measure to allow post request to go through all right so let's take a look how can we uh, disable csrf for now in spring security and do a successful post request after that all right guys so we are now going to disable csrf from spring security by default again i won't recommend that to disable it when you take your application into production but uh, for this video purposes since we haven't reached at a point when we can talk about spring security in details but so we'll just keep it simple we're going to disable csrf from spring security so that we can move on to the next step right so in order to do, do that we'll create a security config class just like we did a swagger config we're going to create a security config class security config all right and then we'll extend that class from a web security i think it's configurer adapter this again comes from spring security all right and just so a spring boot knows about this particular class we'll annotate that with configuration so you know in the boot up uh, spring knows to load this class as well and you know prepare the security configuration and we'll just keep it very very simple we just want to disable csrf so we'll say um, we'll override a configure function configure all right http security security and we'll just say disable a csrf i think there is a csrf typed it dot disable and uh, let's see um, yeah, just name it HTTP security and we want to do HTTP security uh, my caps log on HTTP security CSRF disable let's see if there is an area okay so we want to add an exception all good so that's it right we have just added a class name security config uh, extending from uh, configurer adapter and we since we are extending it we're going to override configured method that exists inside this guy right and we we're going to say okay disable csrf for now you know i'm i'm fine without it right so we just did that and let's restart our application so um, since we haven't implemented that this guy was in you know in the action and it was trying to enable CS, CSRF right with CSRF you cannot do a post request all right let's do a get request again 200 okay expected and let's do a post request and this is the you know testing point now uh, we have uh, authorization fine let's do a post and we can see 200 okay came back right looks like that particular video ob object got inserted let's verify that from get request and it came back right so we can see we have just disabled csrf and now we can successfully do a post request right so um we'll take a look how can we you know enable csrf and still go through the post mapping uh, on a you know later videos 
but in order to bypass this issue we can just create one class and disable uh, default CSRF so now we can do a post mapping with CSRF disable let's clean up our code a little bit so in post mapping we are calling save to DB inside our service but uh, like before we are not validating the object anymore so let's validate the video object and we'll call our is valid method we'll say if it is valid then call the repository right so if it's valid we'll call the repository and we'll just return it true here right if it's not valid there is no point of calling the repository and we'll return a false right and we'll make this method return a boolean value okay so now save to db is returning a boolean value we'll go back here we'll say just like before we'll say boolean has added so this value has added can be either true or false if it is true we'll return uh, you know uh, ok status we can I think also do dot status and we can say HTTP status dot created since we are creating something this is better than ok because ok is you know very generic now we are saying okay we have created a resource successfully and if it's you know if the boolean value is not true then we'll just say it's a bad request it's not a valid request right so let's rerun our application and go back to postman so we can run the same request again inside post uh, we have a valid let's change that to spring boot um, get right something and we send a valid request and we see 201 created right uh, so if, if I had a two, 200 ok uh, if, I have a, if I have used a response entity dot ok then I would have seen 200 ok here right uh, but 201 created is better because obviously we created a new resource you know added something inside the database uh, let's see if we get that resource back so you can see we, we are getting it back as well uh, let's add something that's not valid let's remove the title and let's send it back we can see 400 bad request so because the title is present a title was not present uh, we treated that video object as a invalid uh, invalid object right so this guy returned false here and the controller said okay if it's false I'm gonna just say it's a bad request right so that's working just fine let's do a more cleanup in the video service we don't need the old get video object because it was querying from the list we also don't need the save guy this was query from, querying from the list and we don't need this list anymore because we are using in memory database right and uh, and that's it for now right I think this is good and uh, yep th this is good and we I think we need to do more cleaning and the get request but we'll we can see that later alright guys that's it for this video um, in the next video I plan to talk about uh, doing more queries so when user comes with a title and say okay I want all the video objects from this title we're going to take that you know that video object and query the database and we're going to get written, you know we're going to get all the video objects from the title so we're going to talk about uh, other JPA features where we can query database using JPA so it's, it's going to be very very interesting so stay tuned for that thanks a lot guys